Welcome to a very special edition of our Fear No Fix video series on the Blue Driver channel. Today we have one that's kind of out of the ordinary. There's no trouble codes, doesn't really hurt the way the vehicle drives. It's not unsafe, it's just a pain in the butt. It's when your Prindle indicator is not reading out. So in, there's a really expensive fix, and then there's a really cheap fix. Chris. This is a great one. This is an honest, full on, just repair. We're not replacing any parts. We're just gonna remove the Minster cluster, we're gonna resolder a bag connection, put it back in, and we're good to go. Yeah, this happens all the time on, on these trucks, so hopefully this saves you a ton of money, and hopefully this video saves you a bunch of time. And if so, please like the video and subscribe to us on our Blue Driver channel. Let's get at this one, Chris. The tools you'll need to complete the instrument cluster repair are a ratchet, a seven millimeter or 932nd socket, a ratchet extension, a soldering iron, and wheel chocks. We'll start by setting the steering wheel as low as it can go. Next, we're gonna put the ignition run for a second and we're gonna put the gear shift as low as it can go. Now, we're gonna pry out on this panel right here from the top. Looks like someone already tried this repair a couple years ago. I swear this wasn't me. Just start around the edges, pull gently, it'll pop out. Then up and out. Now we're gonna take a seven millimeter socket and we're gonna remove the bolts here, here, up here, and back there. We'll have to put the gear shift back as low as it'll go. Pull the instrument cluster out, and then squeeze in on this gray connector right here. And that's it. All right, we're set up on the workbench. First thing we're gonna do is take the instrument cluster apart, and then we're gonna have a look at that board. First, we're gonna ply up on these clips here and here and the clips on the other side. Push on these two tabs with a screwdriver and then pull up. Now we're going to remove the gauge needles. Pry up on the needle on both sides at the same time and pull them off the stepper motors. These resistors here are the most likely culprits. Small cracks might develop where the resistor is soldered to the board. This can cause intermittent display issues or the display might fail completely. This is a close-up of the solder joint under a microscope. You don't need anything like this for the repair. This is just kind of to give you a good idea of what exactly is going on. You can see at the bottom of this resistor, there's a small crack running horizontally. As the resistor pries up or down, this can make or break contact, causing the display to come on and off. Just to play it safe, we're gonna resolder each resistor. 
using your soldering iron, melt the existing solder, then add a dab of new stuff as well. We'll do this again now for each resistor. Now we're ready to reassemble the instrument cluster. Snap on the front half. Reinstall the gauge needles on the stepper motors. Make sure the needles can't rotate counterclockwise beyond the zero position for each gauge. If the needles are put on incorrectly, then when you start the truck, you might see something like 5,000 RPM, negative 1,000 RPM, zero volts, etc. So they have to be put on in the same position they came off. Snap on the back half of the instrument panel. That's it for the repair. Now we'll head back to the truck to see if it worked. Now that we've resoldered all those resistors, we're going to put it back in. First, we'll hook up this connector. The gray points back towards the front of the truck. Put in our four seven millimeter bolts. Put the gear shift in the lowest position again. Then reinstall the dash piece. And then just push all around the outside to clip it in. Now that everything's reinstalled, we're going to give it a try and see if we can figure out what gear we're in. Perfect. Everything looks great. Aha! And there it is. It works again. Nice, Chris. Now I know when I'm in drive, my garage door is safe. So this one, you don't have to clear the check engine light, no nothing. You're back on the road, not hitting your garage door. So if you like this video, if it made your life easier, if it saved you a ton of money, please like the video and subscribe to our Blue Driver channel. And until next time, fear no fix.